The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Forefathers of the Seminoles and Creeks, marked by giant magnolias and oaks, land of natural wealth, and the home of granddaddy thunderstorms. And we've had a succession of them today. As today, the top ranked Florida State Seminoles will attempt to turn away the invaders from the north, Syracuse Orange Men. The weather, the temperature is 80 degrees. The cup runneth over in humidity. The wind is nominal and the rain has been very heavy. Florida State coach Bobby Bowden has a favorite saying about all the hoopla that goes with being number one. If that halo slips a foot, it becomes a noose. Well, Bob Greasy, his Florida State football team ought to be wary today because their euphoria from the Michigan win could become a eulogy. Well, everybody has been asking, are they ripe for an upset? And Bobby Bowden only has to look down to Gainesville, Florida, where two weeks ago this same Syracuse team defeated the Florida Gators in the Carrier Dome. Uh, the Seminoles have uh, noted that very, uh, very smartly. Uh, can Syracuse come on and, and, and pull the upset? Two things. They've got great special teams. They lead the nation in kickoff returns. And secondly, they run a type of option, a type of offense, the uh, freeze option, that is unique in college football. Florida State hasn't seen a lot of this. Now, how will the rain affect this ball game and all the rain that we've had? Uh, it will slow the foot speed of Florida State tremendously. And uh, on the other side, the option uh, will cause some problems for them. So we ought to see some turnovers for Syracuse. This is the fourth game in the series. It ends with this one. Syracuse becoming more active in the Big East as of next year, and Florida State will go to the ACC. ABC's College Football, brought to you by Chevrolet, the heartbeat of America. Now, one of the most extravagant beginnings anywhere in college football, Chief Osceola riding Renegade. The Chief is a Florida State University student, the costume, authentic Seminole, the horse is a real Appaloosa. Syracuse will be receiving. Florida State will be defending in our first series, and here are the strengths. Well, the option attack is very seventh in the nation in overall defense. Florida State is ranked number one in all the team holes of the country. The Syracuse Orange men ranked number 10. Florida State owns the longest win streak in Division 1A, 10 in a row. Paul Pasqualoni succeeding Coach Mac, Dick McPherson at Syracuse University, and he's got the Orange men at 4-0. Oh. Bobby Bowden, of course, the coach at Florida State. His 16th season here in Tallahassee, and he literally has become a walking legend in this part of the country. Gadri, uh, Gadri Ismail, uh, he is the uh, bigger and younger brother of Ragid Ismail, who was the rocket at Notre Dame. They call this one the missile. Perry Richardson back there with him. Dan Mowry, who had a miserable weekend up in Michigan, kicks it off. It goes to Ismail at the six-yard line. And Quadri comes up uh, across the 15 to somewhere around the 18, and he is brought down by Kevin Adams, and uh, he held on to the ball, and that may have been a victory under the circumstance. Marvin Graves starts at quarterback for Syracuse, started as a freshman, billed as an option offense, but you can see he really is not a running threat out of this offense. But there are plenty of people behind him that can haul the mail, in particular David Walker, and you will see Terry Richardson as the game wears on. The wideouts are very, very quick, and the tight end is a very good receiver, Chris Gedney. They start out of the eye formation. There's your freeze option. They pitch it back to the tailback, David Walker. And David Walker breaks a couple of tackles and gets loose on the sidelines and is finally thrown out of bounds. But not until he has moved all the way to the Florida State 44-yard line. 
pushed out of bounds by number 89, Howard Dinkins. Well, this is the option as good as you're going to see it from behind the defense. He's almost caught from behind, tosses the ball, block on the wide receiver, breaks some tackles. This is the upside of the option. Assignment football. If one man misses, you're in trouble. Of course, the downside is, especially in this kind of weather, with all the fumbles. So David Walker out of Rochester comes up with the first big play of the ball game, and the Orange men are cooking up the Florida State 44. They're playing on prescription turf. It is held up very well. Pitch it back open. to Graves, down the middle, goes for Ismail. He's open. He's got it. Touchdown, Syracuse! There are no flags. The ball was given to the running back. He pitched it back to the quarterback. A semi-flea flicker play, and Ismail down the middle, 44 yards for the touchdown. Well, you know that Florida State and Bobby Bowden usually does all of the trick plays, but here's one from Syracuse on the second play of the game. An excellent throw and a great call by the offensive coordinator, Gene DeLeon, Quadri Ismail in for the score. One of the better place kickers in the country, John Biscop, in for the extra point try out of the hold of Mark McDonald, quarterback. He missed just, uh, he needs two to break the all-time Syracuse record, and now he needs one. And the big crowd is stunned in Tallahassee. Look at that last play from the end zone. Nobody in deep center field back here for the... Uh, Seminoles, watch the play action here. Quadri Ismail is going to come from the side. A good play action fake. Tosses it back to the quarterback. Bottom right of your screen, there's Ismail. Way ahead, one of the defensive backs tries to make up. It's an outstanding throw and a big play off the bat. That was a free safety that had drifted out of the center field position and couldn't catch up in time. And Ismail stands in the end zone. Poses for the picture, and how do you do? 7-0 Syracuse. As the Orange men kick off Pat O'Neill, who has knocked it into the end zone 23 out of 25 times. Now may add one more, and of the 26 times into the end zone, only six have been returned. Casey Weldon comes out to quarterback the Seminoles. He's beat up and banged up. He had a tough day last week up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, even though his team did score 51 points to win. He's very sore, and in particular, the right leg. The rest of the backs are Edgar Bennett, outstanding receiver at fullback, great blocker. Ant Lee is the electrifying tailback, and the wideouts can all fly. Lonnie Johnson opens at the tight end. The ball of the 20. Syracuse going 80 yards in two plays. Walker and Ismail are making the two big plays. First down for the Florida State Seminoles. And they hand it off to Lee, and Lee finds daylight on the line and crosses the 35 and goes to the 40 and goes to the 42-yard line before Dwayne Joseph, the quarterback, can finally ride him down. Amply, six feet, 195, he runs bigger. The offensive front for Florida State, not all that big, but they get the job done. Kevin Mancini's had the flu all week and has lost 12, 15 pounds. But Lee turned in one of the best 44-yard runs I've ever seen last week against Michigan, and that was a good one right there, and here he goes again. A little juke here and a little juke there. The ball comes out, it is down. It'll be put down at the 48-yard line. So Amp Lee comes out as the busy man early on, and somebody in the Michigan camp last week when the game was over was heard to ask, did they spray that guy with silicone? Well, I, Syracuse may be wondering the same thing before this day is over. His footwork is quite remarkable. Well, it's second down, long three. Syracuse jumping out to a 7 nothing lead. Weldon gives the ball away to Lee. He's got a first down as the ball moves across to the Syracuse 48-yard line. Young on the tackle. Syracuse lines up defensively this way. Brooks is their principal uh, man in the middle. Kevin Mitchell will go nose guard as well as outside linebacker. They lost Dan Conley. He was an outstanding linebacker, and they miss him. Their backers are Wooden and Hawkins outside with Young and Lusardi inside, and the secondary reflected there. And it's a secondary that's going to be under pressure all day because of the speed of the Florida State white people. First down to the Seminoles at the Syracuse 48. 
Weldon hands the ball away, and it is Bennett, and Bennett can't find much room. Edgar, a 210-pound senior from Jacksonville. This is the first time that Florida State has been behind in the ball game, as you see, in a good long time. And I am told that Auburn was about to lose a game today to Southern Mississippi by a score of 10 to 9. And that's news because the Bowden family is very much involved in that ball game. Well, his wife Ann went to that ball game. There's two sons on one on each side, Southern Miss and Auburn. Weldon gives the ball away again. Casey Weldon again with a sore right leg and a hip pointer that he had to shake off during the week, giving it to Lamp Lee. The field looks pretty good right now. Jack Arute on the field to tell us why it looks so good. Well, Keith, I'm actually where they can defend why it's so good. These pumps here are part of the prescription athletic turf system. They drain the water from beneath the, the area, and they pump out 360 gallons of water from beneath the field. The footing is excellent. And the water is still being sucked out of the ground. Weldon sets it up, gets it away in a hurry, and Shannon Baker dropped the ball. That was that little crossing pattern from the wideout that they ran last week yeah. against Michigan, and it worked. This time he dropped it. It's a wide receiver screen. And going back to what Jack was saying from down at the pumps, it really rained here uh, really hard for like two and a half hours before this ball game, And this uh, field is in great shape. As you see, Southern Mississippi has beaten Auburn. That is an upset when yeah. you do it in Auburn. Well, you understand that, uh, too, that uh, Pat Dye went for the two-point conversion and missed. Scott Player is in to punt for Florida State. And that's news as the, uh, the uh, Seminoles have to give up the ball in their first possession. So the Syracuse defense did its job. It's cut it for this. This is the first and the most prestigious Big Top Circus in the United States as part of the Florida State University. It's been here since the institution went forward in 1947. And they do put on one grand show, yes, I'll tell you. Do. All right, the Seminoles to nothing in the first quarter. It starts just short of the 14-yard line. The tailback is Terry Richardson. Marvin Graves, the quarterback, keeps the ball and turns it upfield and picks up about nine yards. Now, the offensive front for Syracuse, again, is not one of those huge uh, things that we saw early on in the season. There are no 300-pounders there, but there are a bunch of guys that have a very good work ethic, and they seem to do what's expected of them. Let's move people around and open the door for the option offense. The Braves jump out to a 3 0 lead. They lead the National League West by a game, having won last night, while the Dodgers lost at Kendall Stick Park in San Francisco. Second down, top two, Oda Richardson. He sticks his helmet in the crowd. He's very close to his first down. He is from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, playing at Syracuse. They're going to take a good long look at it. Let's spend a moment with Roger Twibo. That is a team that will be reckoned with down the road at NC State. Now. NC State, what a great job Sheridan is doing. It was a first down by a tad. 24-yard line for the Orange men. They lead 7-0. I keep saying that in case you're joining us a little late because Florida State isn't behind very often. Here's your freeze option. They come off of it. The pass is thrown across the field up to about the 35-yard line and caught by Antonio Johnson. And that will be a first down for Syracuse. The Florida State defensive unit lines up with three down, but you'll see those outside backers come up the line more often than not. So effectively, they'll be playing sometimes at eight-man front because they will come after you. The inside backers are the leading tacklers. The secondary is quite good, and Terrell Buckley, of course, was quite a star last Saturday. First down for the Orange. The Rutgers bouncing around. Now he's coming, comes to the outside. The pass is thrown to the outside, and it's incomplete. Chris Getney, the tight end, was the intended receiver. The ball was too low for him to have a chance at it, and Getney had a matchup. He's 6'5", 230, and he was matched up on McCorvey, a 6-foot, 185-pound corner. 
Syracuse likes to establish that option first and then go to their play action and power game from there. The only problem with that is Florida State defensively is one of the top teams in the nation against the run. David Walker moves into the fullback position out of the eye. Richardson stays as the deep back. Crowd trying to get into it, and uh, Marvin Graves went for a checkoff. Uh, the time clock uh, was ticking down. Graves saw it, called timeout. Carruthers is beefing. He thinks the, the clock had expired and they should be penalized. So it is not, a, they're not uh, going to charge the timeout to Syracuse. Carruthers argued his case and he won his case as the referee, Dale Phillips, consulted uh, with one of his colleagues and sure enough, five yard too much time. There's a wristband on Graves' arm. They signal the number of the play in from the sideline. He merely looks at the number, and at side of it is the, the uh, corresponding play they want him to run. It's second down and about 15. From the 30. First down marker, and it appears he's got it. Marvin Jones brought him down. A lot of the Ivy League and the Northeast teams have completed their games. And those are their final score. Paul Pascalotti, who replaced Dick McPherson as the head coach uh, of the Syracuse Orange, came out of Western Connecticut. It is a first down for the Orange, just over the 40, call it the 41. Graves is four out of five now for 71 yards and the touchdown. Here's your option, goes to Richardson, a little skip step trying to cut back inside. It's been raining off and on since last night, and I mean hard. Howard Dinkins able to get to him and bring him down. Look at that, Columbia won a game, is winning a game. I shouldn't say one, it ain't over, but they're close. <laughs> the Fordham Rams, he mentioned may rise up. You mentioned Pasqualoni and uh, Dick McPherson. Uh, Pasqualoni was hired only two days after McPherson was given the New England Patriot job, and I think that is key because the continuity continued on. He did bring in some new coaches, but the terminology on offense and defense is the same. Second down and six for Syracuse. Graves gives it to his fullback, Al Wooden. And Wooden, a 230-pound sophomore from Niagara Falls, did not find much daylight. They slammed the door on him right about midfield. Time remaining eight minutes in the first quarter. Syracuse has dominated the time of possession. They lead in the ball game by a score of seven to nothing. Walker is the deep man. Richardson goes up into a slot now. Crowd coming up, making as much noise as they can. Graves has time, lets it go. It's Ismail. He's out there. It's off his hands, incomplete. Terrell Buckley covering, but Ismail was loose and gone if he had uh, been able to catch the ball. Buckley actually is going to jump to our left. Now he has help to the inside. Ismail is going to go straight down between both defensive backs. This ball is thrown very well. Just misses. Ismail is going to need a uh, snorkel to get out of that one. Yeah, that's the one place on the field where the water is collected and uh, did not drain. The pump must be uh, yeah, it's, it's, something wrong with it in that corner because that's the only place there is standing water. Here's a big play guy right here. Pat O'Neill, one of the big legs in college football right now, and he hits it toward the corner, but I think he bought the sideline well back up field. They mark it at the 16-yard line, and there Florida State will have it, a 34-yard punt. Pete top 10, our game here in Tallahassee involves uh, number one and number 10. And number 10 has been the dominant one so far in the game. 
They have a pretty good ball game out on the West Coast tonight. As you can see, Arizona-Washington. Uh, Michigan has gone out in front of Iowa by a score of 7-0. That's in Iowa City. And Oklahoma is uh, leading their game against uh, the Iowa State Cyclone. Miami won big today, 40-3 over Oklahoma State. From the 16-yard line, there's Amp Lee again. When you think you've got him down on the ground and sitting on him, suddenly he squirts loose and uh, he's gone. He got away from Glenn Young, and that's a pretty good chore because Young is a tough guy inside linebacker. Syracuse has run uh, 11 plays to seven now for Florida State. At 121 yards for Syracuse here in the first quarter. And uh, you have uh, 38 for uh, Florida State. And the Orange Middle leading the Seminoles, 7 to nothing as Weldon goes back. Wanted to throw it down the middle. Play was taken away from him. Number 77 reaches across and gets a piece of him. That's Big Jim Wentworth, a senior from Auburn Mass. And uh, Wentworth went after his man and he got him. You look at from behind, Casey Weldon fakes to Amp Lee. A little penetration over Blox's view, as you could have uh, seen right there, and uh, just throws the ball away to avoid a sack and come up with uh, third and about five. George Rooks got in the path of the pass that his uh, his checkoff pass, and uh, when Rooks gets in front of you, he uh, occupies some space. He's six <laughs> four, two hundred and seventy pounds. Tough to see around there. Yep. Third down, five. This is Edgar Bennett. Bennett has a first down. Up at the 32-yard line. Edgar Bennett. That's the strength of this uh, offense for the Seminoles as you take a look at Bennett and what he has done. They're so unpredictable. They can run as well as they can throw. Third and five. Bobby Bowden says, well, we can run as well as we can throw, and I'll prove it to you. Little delay draw. Picks up a first down. From the 32. Weldon goes underneath. Pass is caught by Matt Fryer, a sophomore out of Live Oak, Florida. He was going down as he caught the ball at the 37-yard line. Nationally, Florida State ranked very highly. Casey Weldon on the individual statistics is the third rated quarterback in the country. Thank you very much Way to get your touchdown too. You know, that's demoralizing. The winner of that game uh, has gone to the Rose Bowl four of the last six years. On first down, Casey Weldon comes back, looks for the big one. It's not there. He goes underneath. Winded set up the screen for Edgar Bennett. Bennett will pick up a couple of yards on the play, and that'll do it. And Weldon was put down hard as he released the ball. He was put on his back by Garland Hawkins, number 95, an outside linebacker. At a wide out position, they call him a flanker, but you might find him anywhere. And Kevin Knox, number 81, is in to replace him. Weldon to throw it, has time, and goes underneath with it to pass two Knox. And the sophomore from a nice town in Florida called Niceville makes the catch. Just a wide receiver screen. It's a safe call, Let's Keith. Go, right here, the receiver is going to come down the line of scrimmage. The offensive lineman can go on downfield and block because the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. This is Florida State's second possession of the ball game. 3.55 to go in the first quarter, and Syracuse leads it 7-0. A 44-yard play with Clutter Ismail making the catch and run for the touchdown. From Marvin Graves. This handoff goes inside to the fullback Bennett. Second effort by Bennett. We'll have a first down for Florida State. 
So the Seminoles now grinding one out here. That I think everybody thought would be there. Kansas City has struggled just a little. Ampley with the ball, skips and slides, and then gets decked, and he is brought down by Big George Rooks. George is from White Plains. George Rooks is an outstanding player, started as a true freshman, in fact, has started all four years at Syracuse. His 12 and a half career sacks, and uh, he'll be starting somewhere in that other league next year, too. Yes, he will. They've had a history of outstanding defensive linemen uh, come through Syracuse. He's a four-year senior. Second down. Here goes Knox. I mean, they take out one, they put in another one. He may be a little younger and a little greener, but he's bigger and faster. Basically the same play as they ran before. A wide receiver screen. He's going to come down here. Watch him as they let the defensive line come in. The offensive line will go downfield and block the linebackers. Right behind that wall. Look at the wall ahead of him. Great timing on that play. Ball is just inside the Syracuse 13. First down for the Seminoles. Spins away from a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and will pick up a yard. Kevin Mitchell, number 50, is playing nose guard. But as I said earlier in the telecast, you will see Mitchell in the pass rush circumstance at an outside linebacker position. Well, he was a linebacker when he first came to Syracuse. He is not big, only 245 pounds, about 6'1. That defense can also play the run. They're fifth, uh, fourth in the nation coming in against the run, only allowing 62 yards a game. On a second down and 10 from the Syracuse 13. Golden rolls out. Pass into the end zone. Touchdown. Fire. Side receiver is going to go down and hook to the inside. You see the other receiver now he slides back out and stays in the open area. That's a key for a good receiver. Fryer, just a sophomore, not a starter on this ball club, but he gets to play a lot, and that is the reason because he was intelligent, knew when he was open, and stayed in the area. Dan Mowry, who had the miserable weekend at Michigan, nails it. He's pretty good at home. <laughs> He's pretty excited right now. Casey Weldon has hit his last five. You want to see something that's truly, genuinely fun? Let's go back a week when Hap Lee had that wonderful 44-yard run against the Michigan Wolverines. Let's let's watch with his mom and dad. Let's go, huh? Let's go. Big hole on the left side. Michael. Still going. That was an absolute 44 yard scamper against Michigan last week. His mom reacting to it as she watched it at home on television. She needs to let her emotions go a little uh, bit more, you know? <laughs> yeah. She needs to stop holding it in. <laughs> That's terrific. <laughs> We've got a tie ball game now at seven here in Tallahassee, and we haven't had any rain for 10 minutes, and that's an upset. Uh, if you were here about two hours before ball game, uh, two and a half hours, it came down in buckets. Big buckets. Maury, good kick. Is mile, six yard line. Padre finds a hole. Still going. Great speed. But he's gone. He's got one man with an angle. He won't catch him. It is touchdown, 94 yards. Ismail, no flags. There's something in the genes of the Ismail boys, I'll tell you. Well, they've got two touchdowns on the day, both big plays and both from Quadri Ismail. Was not a starter last year, getting to play this year for the first time, although he did run back kicks last year the official will give him 95 yards on the run 
This good for the extra point try. It is good. Well, he is now the all-time Syracuse return man. Just a crack is all he needs. Now he can outrun some of these. Some of them were nipping at his heels. But see, another one. He's 190 pounds, 192 pounds. Now he can run. That's his sixth touchdown on the year. He has two in this ball game. He was the Big East uh, hurdles champion, and he can run. Ninety-five yards is where it goes into the books. And at 104 to go in the first quarter, the big house in Tallahassee gets quiet. Last week it was Desmond Howard. This week it's Ismail. You know, you, you wonder whether that was a clip or not. I think that the, uh, that was, who was that? The kicker? Yep. Looks like he turned his back, and I don't think that's a clip. I mean, if you turn your back when you're going to be blocked, I think it's a good no call by the official. Tiger McMillan handling O'Neill's kickoff, and O'Neill, who has a habit of knocking the ball beyond the field of play and not having it returned, well, that one was brought back because it was short and settled in the field of play, and Florida State will go to work with it at their own 22 uh, 27 yard line and uh, slightly stunned the crowd of more than 60,000. I think they're thinking back now to what the uh, University of Florida two weeks ago was going through up in the Carrier Dome and Syracuse just got out in front and just ran away from them. Well you know Evan you grind it out and you march down the field and you finally get your touchdown to tie it and uh, before you can take a deep breath they're back in front. It can, have, it can impact the will of a team. Amp Lee to the 30-yard line, a pickup of three yards. Glenn Young brought him down, and a penalty flag is thrown along the line of scrimmage. It's against Florida State to the general scholarship fund of each school as part of the Chevrolet scholarship program. So the Seminoles and their head man Bobby Bowden slightly shaken for the moment. I think he's uh, usually uh, on the other side of the field. He feels like uh, that first touchdown to Ismael was a trick play, a uh, lateral and a deep pass. And the kickoff return, he's used to getting some easy touchdowns. The holding call. This is Ant Lee. He is quite remarkable. He wiggles and waggles and wobbles, and suddenly he's loose and gone up to the 25-yard line. Well, he's a patient runner, too, Keith. He just doesn't run up if there's a, if the hole is supposed to be to the left side. If there's nothing there, he doesn't run into the pile. He has his head up. He's patient. He's uh, got the feet to slide right or left in case the hole is a little bit left or right of where it was supposed to be. The top rank team in the nation trailing as we come down to the end of the first quarter. There's the attempt at the screen pass. Weldon throwing a little too high. Lee couldn't pull it down. And so number one trails number 10 after a quarter of play, 14 to 7. Chief Osceola. His Warriors are behind. 14 to 7 as we go to the second quarter of play. In case we didn't note it, John Biscop, the place kicker for the Orange, all time as you record now, at 76. Casey Weldon, all day, lets it go, and it's a fraction too high. The pass intended for. Kez McCorvey, and Greg Walker was defending. McCorvey had him in his pocket but couldn't pull it down. First half statistics, uh, time of possession at the bottom. Florida State is way ahead. Look at the total yardage, 121 to 126. About the same, but Syracuse with the big strike on the... They're forced Florida State into the punt now. There are 10 orange men up on the line of scrimmage. Shelby Hill is deep. Scott Player. Uh, Puts it out of there, gets it nice and high. Shelby Hill with very sore ribs makes the catch, can't get away. Goes down the 
bobble of order at the 28-yard line. Shelby Hill is another one of those flyers at wide out, and he is the son of the great pro, J.D. Hill. 45-yard punt, minus two on the return. <laughs> That's for sure. He keeps it himself much of the time. Ismail comes into the backfield, and they set up now on a wishbone. Here he goes down the line on the option. He pitches it out to Ismail. And Padre turns it upfield and picks up about nine yards on the play. I mean, he held that thing until it had a postage stamp on it. <laughs> well, you were right. He doesn't like to throw it, and he doesn't like to pitch it. Dinkins is number 89. He knows there's number 33. That's Walker. Now he gets a good block. That starts the option. But Florida State knows the same thing we know. They, he's never thrown a pass. He likes to run it. They force him to pitch it. Turns out to be a good positive play. Second down and one. Same set. Except they're wide to the open side of the field. They give it inside to the fullback. Marcus Lee, a 225-pounder from Springfield, Mass. And he's going to have what appears to be the first down. Michigan and Iowa 7-6 in the second quarter now. And Ohio State beats Wisconsin. Look at this. In Los Angeles, UC or in Pasadena, actually, at the Rose Bowl, UCLA has taken the lead over Cal. And it looks like a poor season for Michigan State, doesn't it? Atlanta, meantime, at 4-2, as you see the Giants leading the Dodgers. Oh, I mean, there is old bad blood between the Giants and Dodgers. I, oh, yeah. I, it's strictly advantage Atlanta. In exactly. That I mean, it's advantage playing Houston at home as opposed to the Dodgers traveling to the, the Giants at San Francisco. Womack has done his job. He's given them the change of pace. He's uh, hopefully planted something in the mind of the Florida State defense. So he leaves the game, and Graves comes back. His mile is out. And Graves sets him up on first down at the 39-yard line. And uh, keeps it himself and he is set. Marvin Jones, sophomore, inside linebacker from Miami. He looked like his big brother Fred on that play. He just picked him up and dropped it. Well, you talk about the freeze option. Here's a freeze option. The man right here, number 33, is going to freeze. Now, when the quarterback gets the ball, he's going to step back and then travel down the line. Here's Marvin Jones. He's going to have none of it, comes around the corner, and makes the tackle. That freeze, he was going to throw the football. That was a play-action pass, but the freeze is supposed to freeze the linebackers. That time, Jones was on a blitz. You're not supposed to blitz. There's not a whole lot of gain on that play by Marcus Lee, but one of the things that's impressive about the way Syracuse plays football this season is the offensive line surge. Even though that man was down, there were still three of those offensive linemen downfield, eight, nine yards, knocking people around. Well, the thing that Pasqualoni had to do in his first year at Syracuse is replace four of the five starters. He moved the tight end, D's, from tight end to right tackle and brought a backup nose tackle over. He's starting at left guard. They're playing well. It's third down and 12. And Graves back. Pass is away. The pass is incomplete. It was intended for Antonio Johnson. Johnson weighs 185 pounds, but he only stands 5'7". So he's at a bit of a disadvantage when he's playing in there against defenders at 6'2 and 6'3. Well, the thing that they're doing, Keith, Syracuse, is they're challenging Florida State. They're going deep some, they're running their offense some, and they're not intimidated by being outside the carrier dome playing in a poor weather condition on grass against the best team in the nation. In the punt now, Pat O'Neill. His first kick was 34 yards. When he gets it and gets a tight spin on it, he'll knock it up in the clouds like that. Terrell Buckley, 24-yard line. Not quite. He found a little bit of a crack, started to wiggle his way back up, but he only got as far as the 26, a 40-yard punt. 
Pass Field since 1980 when they started playing in the Carrier Dome. They're 14, 10, and 1 on Grass Field. And one of their wins this season came on Grass against at Maryland. Yeah, they've won 12. 12 of the last 15, too, Keith. Yep. First down. Here they go as Casey Weldon sets up the Seminoles offense. Goes underneath to Lonnie Johnson, the tight end. And Big Lonnie rumbles out to the 35-yard line. He's about a yard short of his first down. Warren Hart had a very big ball game against Michigan. So he, he'll be in there, too. He and Johnson share the, the tight end responsibilities most of the time. Look at defensively, Syracuse in the nation. Fourth best rushing defense. This team can play. Their philosophy is uh, don't give up anything big, just a containing style of defense against Florida State especially. They're a physical team up front, but zones behind. Weldon again opens it up. Got a man. Oh, my goodness, the ball was tipped a little bit by number 17, Greg Walker, and then it ricocheted off the hands of Kevin Knox. And here's Roger in New York. Touch Keith at Iowa. The Hawkeyes blocked a Michigan punt. And on the ensuing drive, Matt Rogers from the 10-yard line on the option will power over several tacklers into the end zone for the touchdown. They missed the two-point conversion after missing the extra point try on their first touchdown. 12-7, second quarter. Let's go back to Keith. Hayden giving you the business for not giving Iowa enough credit. I, I hey, I, I like <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're the Rodney Dangerfield of the uh, college football, though. I mean, they didn't get enough respect, but uh, they do a good job. It's hardly a media center. Yeah, that's for sure. Edgar Bennett getting the first down for Florida State, the fullback with the 36. Seminoles are trailing in this ball game. Yes, that's exactly what I said. They are trailing in the ball game, 14 to 7. And there is the mastermind right there, the center of everything that goes on offensively. He's trying to figure out what Syracuse is doing defensively so he can call the right play. Weldon to give Ant Lee. And Ant Lee just sort of sliding, skating along, and picks up nine yards before he is brought down by Glenn Young. Next Saturday, ABC College football doubleheader. We'll be down in Miami as the Nittany Lions of Penn State come into the Orange Bowl against number two Miami Hurricanes. And then at 3.30 Eastern, it's regional action. Virginia Clemson, Oklahoma, Texas, and a Big Ten game with Ohio State and Illinois. So check your local listing in your region next Saturday here on ABC Sports. Good to Knox. Knox is knocked out of bounds by Walker. Greg Walker, number 17, from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Knox, uh, number 81, from Niceville, Florida. See Casey Welding look, look, looking over to the sideline to Bobby Bowden. I'm sure he probably had a little sign or something to him. You know, Knox, who caught that pass, is the fifth receiver on the depth chart. He may be playing because Bowden feels as though he has better footing. He doesn't try to overstride. He may not be as fast as the other ones, and you need good foot runners on this field today. First down. Nothing there. Edgar Bennett with the ball, and Glenn Young with Edgar. Young is a Canadian. 230-pound junior from Scarborough, Ontario. Talking about Young, he leads this team in tackles. Is, a, is the leader of the team, majoring in pre-med, an outstanding student, B plus uh, average. Eric Terrell, number seven, is back at wideout for the Seminoles. Little uh, screenplay that one may love to run for the. Uh, Flanker screen and it doesn't work. Weldon in the game is seven of 13 for 71 yards so far. Rutgers got by Army, huh? Miami in the Big East. It just seems strange. Sam, Sam Jankovic. Sam Jankovic. Yeah, he did that for the sake of basketball as yep. much as anything. Yep. So look, 71 yards for both quarterbacks. You've got to believe that Graves is having the more productive day so far. Third down and ten. Weldon goes down the middle. Has it, man, it is 
complete to Edgar Bennett. It's inside the 20, first down, Seminoles at the Syracuse 18. Well, what they've been doing is playing double zone. These two men have been dropping to the outside. And when they play double zone, one of the things you can do is get somebody right down the middle of the field. Now watch as you throw, play action holds the linebackers, and then Bennett gets jammed but has enough ability to get around it. Well, that's a tough catch. You got three people around you. You catch that ball. Big Warren Hart is in there now, the 260-pound tight end. Pitch it to Amp Lee. And Lee stretches for a couple of yards. Hart was on that side. They put him in for his bulk, and he rode the outside backer for Syracuse out of the play. Hawkins Brown, number 98, made the tackle for the orange. Amp Lee, before we see him against Miami later in this year, I promise you faithfully, I'm going to find out what his whole name is. <laughs> well, they have got an outstanding uh, backfield. Amp Lee has not fumbled, lost a fumble in over 300 attempts, both rushing and passing. Underneath it goes, and it is thrown just a little bit behind Lee. Amp can't reach back and then reel it in. So it falls away. Time remaining in the first half is 8.05. 14-7, Syracuse is leading. Atlanta 5-2 now in the fifth inning. Over the Astros, game in Atlanta. Third down and eight. This is Bennett. Up the middle he goes, first down. And about the seven. Tim Sandquist saved the touchdown. The free safety for Syracuse. So Florida State trying to grind it down the field and tie the game. The big plays today have belonged to Syracuse. One of them, a 95-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Ismael. Melvin kept it, lobs it into the end zone, touchdown, Bennett. Here's a look at Bennett right here. Now he's going to slide through the middle after the fake and get in here. With the rollout, it's going to pull these guys over here. Watch now as he's going to fake the run, goes to the outside, Bennett slides down the middle. It's a dangerous throw. But when you have confidence in your receiver, you can do that. Maori hits his second successive point after. And we'll read it again at 14. When you have for Florida State's second touchdown with a seven yard pass reception, the hard way. <laughs> That's your pullback, sports fans. Here's another look. From the other side of the field. That's his third touchdown reception of the year and his 15th catch of the year. And take a look at what the quarterback sees. It's all right. Low angle is good if it's a touchdown. He took a beating <laughs> last week. He's getting whacked around again today, but he is a tough guy. Ismail. Oh, my goodness. He had a crack, and he went inside instead of outside, but it's still a fine return by Ismail. It puts Florida State up first down on the 33, and here is wet-footed Jackaroo. Keith, what a difference a week makes for the kicker, Dan Mowry. Remember last week, it's one he'd like to forget. But away from the Florida State Seminoles home field, he's not very good with point after touchdowns. But at home, he is now, well, he was 12 for 13. He's now 14 for what, 15? 
We're going to auction Jack Hughes one day. <laughs> Graves, the quarterback. Richardson, the tailback. Richardson has the pitch. Walk down. Clifton Abraham, redshirt freshman number two. The cornerback on the boundary side. What you like to do to stop an option team is have your corners play defense right up at the line of scrimmage. That time they were in a two deep zone, which allowed the two corners to play right up. He got around the, the block of Gedney and made the play at the line of scrimmage. Loss of three yards, second down, 13. Terry Farrell into the wide receiver position, replacing Shelby Hill. Hill with very sore ribs. Waves. Buried. Penalty flag thrown by the referee, Howard Dinkins, the tackle. See about the penalty. Holding Syracuse. They'll decline it, pick the play. The loss is back to around the 17 yard line. If you look to the right side of your screen, Dinkins is 89. See the fistful of uh, jersey that the blocker has? Pulls him down right there. The official, the referee right there makes the play, makes the uh, call. Dickens should celebrate. What happened, what set that whole series up, uh, Keith, was the first down play when they lost three yards. Syracuse is not a good team, second and long and third and long. And it's certainly third and long right now. Third and 27. Long, deep pass downfield is incomplete. Intended for Farrell, the ball was thrown from the five-yard line to the Florida State 40. That's 50 yards, 55 yards, and it, it was right on target. It was, and I like the call. I think, I think for Syracuse to get the ball downfield on third and 20, if he intercepts it and he's tackled right there, it's the same as a punt, but at least it's telling your players we are going to go after this team and try to attack the number one rated team in the nation. They'd be very happy if Pat O'Neill could deliver a kick 55 yards. Without a run back from Buckley. Yep. He's run, uh, run one back last week. Low spinner. 45 yard line. Buckley with a little daylight. Down at the 40. 15 yard return, 39 yard punt. Coming up halftime, Prudential halftime report. Roger Twivel and Bo Shipman. Got narrow goalposts this year, huh? <laughs> A narrow goalpost. Do it. You ever seen that, Bob? That's the, uh, what is that? That's the, oh, it's the uh, noise indicator. Pass across the field. Shannon Baker. Baker taps his foot at about the 28-yard line. That's one of those things that you have uh, inside the basketball places. Yeah, I thought that looked like the uh, the spear that the uh, the chief Osceola was carrying around. <laughs> it's the best field position that Florida State has had. Uh, in their first five drives, and it's all set up by that defensive series uh, by Florida State's defense. It's the first catch by a speedy wide receiver for the Seminoles today also. Ball is at the 28-yard line. Chance for Casey Weldon to catch another one as he fires a bullet to Baker down at the 10. Just short of the 10-yard line, Shannon Baker, the junior out of Lakeland, going down low to get the catch. So it's another first down for Florida State as they make their move now to take the lead of the ball game for the first time today. They have trailed throughout and just tied a few minutes ago on that 15 yard punt return after the good defensive series. That's right. It's the first time that Pasqualoni's offense has not kept the ball for a yep. while and moved it downfield. 
Syracuse defense can't afford to be on the field too long because it's a hot, humid day, even though it has been raining. And that pass is tipped and it is incomplete. Looked like Kevin Mitchell might have gotten a hand on it, either here or Wentworth, and uh, stopped the flight of the ball. Time remaining in the first half. Clock stopping at 5.16. Bobby's on the phone to Mark Rick, a former quarterback at the University of Miami. Backed up Jim Kelly. Yes, he did. Quarterback coach for the uh, Seminoles. Second down. Give it a lead. Amp Lee is caught by Glenn Young. Another tackle for Young. And he's down just about the line of scrimmage. Syracuse defensively returned eight starters from last year's team, Keith. So uh, you talk about a strength on this team defensively early in the season, but you got to think too with Ismail coming along the way he has, they've got some big guns on offense. Arizona never got inside the 28 yard line in the Aloha. Though. Yeah, it was, it was 28 zip or something like that. Third down from the 10 yard line, pass to the end zone by Weller. He tried to throw it hard. He had his man available, McCorvey, but he. Did not have a good grip on it apparently because uh, the wetness, the ball sailed over the receiver's head and it's, it's a, fourth down. It's a good point and you can't just uh, set it aside. You can't just overlook it. The field is wet and uh, that ball is going to get wet even though they dry it off between plays. When you set it down on the grass in the quarter and the center comes up and twists it to snap it, it's going to get wet. The rehabilitation of Dan Maury continues now as he comes out for a field goal try. From 27 yards approximately. Looks more like 28. 28. It's up. It's good. He may not need a psychologist this coming week. 17-14, seven holes lead. I'm Frank Gifford. Be with us Monday night from Kansas City when the undefeated Buffalo team yard line. Certainly a heck of a lot closer to it uh, than any other yard marker that I saw. Yet I'm told they're going to give him a 27-yard field goal. I don't know. It really doesn't matter. It's good. If Florida State has the lead 17 to 14. This young man, uh, as you take a look at that last drive, uh, six yards again, six plays, 30 yards set up by the defense. But uh, Maori was is from Tallahassee. A few years ago, they were deciding whether to take Maori or J.D. Carlson, the kicker at Michigan, and they decided on Maori. That kicks a good one down to the six-yard line, where Terry Richardson, the tailback, finds some running room out to the 35 and beyond. And there, Syracuse will go to work with good field position, and now the Orange men trail in the game by three. We mentioned at the opening that uh, Syracuse leads the nation in kickoff returns, and they certainly have not uh, done anything here this afternoon to disprove that. They have a 95-yard kickoff return and good field position on the start of their drives. Look at this. First down for Syracuse. Three down linemen for Florida State. Look at that line. There's five people lined up five yards back of them. A ricochet catch by the tight end Chris Gedney, his second catch of the day. The ball bounced off the arm of one of the Seminoles right into the hands of Gedney. Here's Jack. Keith, probably the biggest thing that Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, has been working with his seminal defense has been when to have the corners commit on this option freeze, whether to stay or stay at home or go across. He see, said he needed a little bit of time to work it out with him. It seems as if he's finally gotten that time. First down, the gate is up to the 46. Now the orange men with a lot of real estate behind them. Graves down the line. Keeps it, turns it, gets a yard, and that's all. And uh, Sterling Palmer, an outside linebacker, basically a defensive end. They call them outside linebackers. I don't know exactly why. But they play what I knew as a defensive end. Yeah, they're the end man on the line. Whether or not the linebacker gets down or stands up, it's just, it's just, uh, that's all it is. But he made a nice play there. 
And as you mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Keith, uh, Graves does not like, the quarterback does not like the run and does not run the option very well when he runs it himself. Second down, nine and a half. Reverse. Here comes Ismael. Shows the man in front of him where he wants it blocked. Penalty flag goes down after the tackle, and he's got a first down, and you may tack on a face mask penalty afterward. Rodri Ismail continues to have a huge day. It's against Florida State. Uh, is it five or 15? Tackle right there in front of you. Just took too long to get out of the way. That's uh, 69. I think that's sharp. Or 68 wisdom. One or the other. But they just they held up uh, Ismail where they, they needed to go make their block a little sooner. But it's a five yard in at Burton, and it's down at the 35 yard line, and Bugbury is mile. Well, that amplifies what I just said. Came in averaging one, 150 a game, is already over that average in, in less than a half. Graves gives it to his tailback, Walker. The tailbacks are, are big guys. Uh, Richardson, 200. Walker, the bigger. He's a junior from Rochester. He's 215. So they'll hit you a lick. But he didn't get much on that carry. Giants have added another one. Well, if the Braves win today and the Giants beat the Dodgers, the Braves win the National League West as the Braves lead the Houston 5 2. Second down, nine. A little wiggle, pitch back. That was not successful. Too slow to develop, not enough uh, real estate to work in either. Uh, you go to the boundary side, you better be quick with it. Walker never had a chance. Just good defense. Mickey Andrews, a defensive coordinator, really, uh, they don't see this very often. You know, Keith, in practice this week, uh, Florida State practiced against the option without a football. They had their demonstration team not have a football. They went through the uh, freeze. They faked at the fullback, went on down the line. Because with a football, it was too tough for, to teach any of their scout team guys. They'd be fumbling all the time. So they worked on assignments without the ball. Dan Footman's almost lined up in the neutral zone, but he gets away with it. Marvin Graves throws, and it is intercepted by Terrell Buckley. How did he do that? He came over the top. Terrific play by Buckley. Take a look up here. He's just going to run a slant and watch as Buckley initially gets turned around. He's turned around. Now he comes back and sees the ball. And without disturbing the receiver, goes over and makes the play. This is an All-American play. Well, this is outstanding. Ooh. This is his fourth, fourth interception of the year. His 13th of his career. And that's a big time play. He had two picks off, picked off, uh, pick, pickoffs last week against Michigan. Casey Weldon trying to get it away. Syracuse batting it around. And they don't get the interception when, in fact, it looked like they were going to. It looked like Casey was going to have a nap back there. Then he suddenly realized that uh, yeah, I got to throw it. And Syracuse almost got it. Well, last week, Terrell Buckley set the tone for the Florida State defense and for the really for the ball game with the interception of Gerback on the second offensive play, right? Second play of the game. This may prove to be a huge play right here as he's given his offensive team the ball back. And let's see what they can do with it in the closing minute of the first half. Bennett saved an interception there when he knocked it away. Yes, he did. They set up a screen. It goes to Knox. And Kevin Knox is out for a first down. He's a big kid, 6'4", 195, a sophomore. And they'll have to move the chains on this one. That should stop your clock at uh, 55 seconds to go in the first half. Knox came into the game with only two receptions on the year. He's already caught four for 53 yards. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. Weldon throwing. Got a man, Knox, up at midfield. It's another first down. And 
That took nine seconds. So 11 seconds. Florida State leading 17-14. The interception by Buckley setting up this possession. Casey Weldon checking off. No huddle. Good protection. They flush him. Penalty flag. And Weldon runs out of bounds. But uh, you got a penalty flag thrown by the referee, Dale Phillips, back up field. And it's holding against Florida State, and that might do in the Seminoles' effort of scoring here with only 22 seconds remaining in the first half. It is a split crew. Dale Phillips of the ACC is the referee. Mike Simcheski is the umpire. Buddy McGrath, the linesman. Rick Patterson, the field judge. John Gottbolt, the line judge. Side judge Jerry McGee and the back judge Doug Colt. Referee is not wearing the microphone. So at 17-14, which apparently is the way they're going to go into the clubhouse, this is going to wind up a 20-yard penalty for Florida State because the holding call was 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. But at 17-14, uh, go back to the point you made earlier that uh, Pasqualoni's got to be reasonably satisfied. Be please, Com coming down with this weather outside the carrier dome, you know, in inside, it's all, everything's perfect. This is Amp Lee. And Amp Lee is taken down by Glenn Young. And uh, that may do it. That was a first and 30 snap. And uh, they're going to go timeout, Florida State. Timeout, Florida State. Florida State call time. Five seconds remaining. I thought they were going to let it run out. Darrell Buckley has a habit of making big plays and has been doing it ever since he showed up at the Seminole campus here in Tallahassee. In 1989, the Seminoles went to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, and it was there after a momentary pause, <laughs> gazing upon the meadow, decided he would go to his left, and he ran 69 yards, but for a touchdown. And that helped key a 41-10 victory for the Central. And uh, this is what he has done today. And that doesn't show that interception where he gave the ball over to the offense. And the interception was really quite good. Buckley is just a junior, and in, in his three years of play, he has, has six career touchdowns, three on punt returns, and three on interceptions. If he keeps up the pace, Dion's going to want him some change. <laughs> well, he follows in in the footsteps of some really good corners at Florida State. Lamar Butley, uh, Butler and um, Dion Sanders. Can you imagine Dion running back and forth in his little helicopter between the Falcons camp and, uh, and playing in the World Series? Playing in the National League Championship here, so he's not, he won't be eligible for this playoffs. Well, that's right. Yeah. That'll do it. We get a little ruckus going on on the field, but uh, they step in and stop that nonsense. And the half is over. 17-14, Florida State. Back with halftime after this message and the word from our ABC station.